game week is here. Excited. Excited for the players. I know they've uh, been through camp and you always want to go play another opponent. Well, we're going to get a very good opponent. We're going to get one that's only had one loss in two years and a coach that's uh, won uh, multiple national championships and uh, has played in multiple, multiple national championship games. They understand how to play, how to win. Down at Coach Keeler has done a tremendous job. Sam Houston, but he's also did it at Delaware where he was at Delaware and he did it at Rowan when he was at Rowan. And uh, but he played in five national championship games there, won, in, won a national championship at Delaware, won one at Sam Houston. Uh, tremendous football coach. We'll have these guys very well prepared. They've done a great job. You watch the film, uh, you can tell how um, well rounded they are and diverse in what they do in their schemes on offense, throw the ball around. New quarterback can really run. He's athletic. Knew him out of high school. I can spin and play with Georgia Tech. Uh, the other new transfers they have, plus with what they have coming back, have done a great job. These kids expect to win defensively, very multiple in their fronts. Uh, a lot of stemming moving up front, blitz packages, things they do, aggressive, uh, physical, multiple coverages, uh, kicking game, very sound. You don't win national championships and win 20 games in a row, uh, 21 games in a row, however many was it mean they won there without uh, being uh, – great team in all three phases and they do it they're well coached they'll come in here ready to play and like i say they've added some new transfers to the roster on both sides of the ball that will be significant plus the other guys that have already won a national championship with so it'll be a great challenge for us we need to play very well uh we need to come out the gate but more importantly have a great week of practice we play well if you practice well you have to come out and understand that and uh but these guys will challenge you not only physically with their ability but their schemes their competitiveness their toughness they do a great job and like I said, we need to play very well and uh, have a great week of practice to get ready to go. Questions? Second row, Olin. Hey, buddy. Jimbo, hi. Just a couple things. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, beyond winning the game, what would a, you think a, 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 a successful uh, game would be? What, what would Execute. Be? Yeah. Be able to do, put your substitutions, not have self-inflicted wounds, play very disciplined and play the game very physical, play it very disciplined and play well in all three phases. Take care of the ball. If you're able to create turnovers, you create them. But make sure you're, you know, executing the plays that are ran and offense, defense, and get your substitutions. Do the things you need to do, and, and have play. You better play a heck of a game. There ain't no things you play with. You go. You're playing a very good football team, so we got to be ready to play that way. And could you give us any kind of uh, illumination about what's going on at the center position? Yeah, I mean our guys are there. Matthew's playing there. Bryce is playing there. Remington's playing there. They're all playing right there and playing. Down front, Brett. I mean, ready to go. I mean, we act, I, I, that's never been a – I don't know where that became an issue. <laughs> like, uh, there's something there I haven't seen. It's the same three guys we've had there since the last two years. Is, just to make it official, is Haynes King your starting quarterback for yes. Saturday? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, how, what did it mean to this program, to you, last year? He didn't just disappear. He, he was on that little card almost looking like an elderly person at Walmart or something, you know, scooting around oh. and helping. No, no, coaches. Haynes is a very involved guy, just like just all three of those guys involved. Be. He's going to do that, man. That's 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 who he is. And that's listen. Any great leader, any great competitor, any great guy who's that was, you know, he was the quarterback of that team is not going to walk away just because you have an injury or at any other position. I don't care if it's a DB or a linebacker or a, you know, we act like that's the quarterback because you notice them more. But those D linemen, that guys that got hurt, D linebackers, the offensive linemen, they were all extremely involved in what we did and how we did it. And you know, that's what players that take a lot of pride. That's their family. And they, listen, you go through the. Trials and tribulations you go through with your football team. You just because you get injured, you don't walk out on them. You can be there and provide a lot of leadership, knowledge, uh, support, so many different things for the players that are playing just because you're injured. And he did a great job of that, as, as our others do. Down front, Travis, and then to the left, Naomi. A little out of left field, but uh, Craig <laughs> Potts is retiring the the head groundskeeper. What what is he? Uh, what has it been like working with him and what he's been able to provide for, for I just want to know who's replacing him because our fields are daggum good. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure we're still getting the same, the same quality of work we're getting. I mean, I mean, listen, our, 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 I said the day I got here when I first walked on the field, you always tell us something. You know, was, my dad always said, how your yard look? How you, are your shoes clean? Do you have a, how it cleans your watch? All things like, how's your car look? All things like that. When you walked here and you looked, walked on these fields, they were like carpet. I mean, the, how immaculate they were, the practice fields, the game fields, the quality of work and what he did and the ability he gave our players, which you don't think about that. The footing and things, when you're talking about guys who were, can play pro football for lots of years and make millions of dollars, you get on a bad surface and something can happen to you. Well, they haven't done that since he's been here. And they, they're immaculate and he's as good as there is in the business.
And then uh, Jordan Gilbert, what have you seen from him, and, and his and how has he uh, stepped his game up to, to take over? The really has. I mean, he's grown. He, he's learning assignments, but feeling more comfortable in the executing his assignments. Jordan's a very athletic guy. He can run. He can play. He's very intelligent. I mean, great student. And now he's been able to take the learning curve from there and put it into football and how it's been applied and multiple things. Tackles well, runs well, can play in space, play the ball. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who recruit, recruited him as a corner. I mean, so he is a, he's a safety who's physical that way. They can have great ball skills. So I think he's making great strides, had a very good camp. Front left coach, Naomi. Oh, uh, so with Haynes King, what was that deciding factor, a moment that really made you decide that he was the one that you wanted to there's start on Saturday? There's multitudes. No, there's no deciding factor. There's multitudes of things over periods of time. And like I've said before, we feel very comfortable with the other two quarterbacks, Max Johnson, be a starter here and I think play very well and so done Connor Wegman. So and we felt Haynes had a great camp, puts us in a great position to be successful going in right now. And that's what we believe in. And it's not there's no one thing. It's a multitude of things on a daily basis from on field, off field, throwing, running, reading, checking, and uh, effect on but at the same time I said it it took a while because you had guys that were matching each other. Guys played very well uh, off of each other and kept pushing each other. And then, but we had to make a decision for the first game. So we're comfortable with, very comfortable with Max. Thought he, I mean, uh, Haynes thought he had a great camp, but felt very good with Max and Connor also that, you know, if Lord willing, nothing happens. But, I mean, you know, you feel very comfortable in that situation. As we did last year, you definitely need him. Back right, Ben, and then to the left, Zach. Coach, uh, what, <clears throat> what jumped out to you and stood out to you about how Haynes handled the, the process with the offseason to have to come back and sort of re-earn that starting job just – not shying away from that part of the competition and, and you know, well, being able to accomplish it. He's not the only one that did. Everybody on the team did have to come back and win the starting job. We only talk about the quarterback. We act, every job's up for grabs every day, every game. If you're not performing and doing the things you have to have, everybody can be replaced. We want to make a big deal about the quarterback, but it happens somewhere else. Sometimes it happens y'all don't even see it. <laughs> I guess you're trying to say that at center, but I haven't seen that at center yet, but, I mean, we'll see. But it can happen anywhere. Every job every day is a competitor, and that's what he does. I – Nothing's entitled to you. Nothing's given to you at any position on any team. And that's what you have to do each and every week. You practice and play. And he went to work every day. I mean, he did it and had some tough days, had some great days, and worked as, you know, worked as, as what he had to do and improved on some things in which he had to improve on, felt comfortable in things he had to do, and you know, got to playing very consistent. Front left, Zach, and then to the right. Chimo, kind of a, to expound on that just a little bit, how much do you feel like Haynes' experience in this offense – and particularly with this team, helped him in this competition? I don't, I don't say it wouldn't, didn't hurt him, but I think all the guys know what's going on. Max picked it up very quickly in those things, and I don't think that was maybe in the beginning, but I don't know just from familiarity from terminology and things, but I don't know if that was a very big factor. I think the other guys learned very quickly and picked things up. They're very intelligent guys. Front right, Cole. Jimbo, when you look at a team like Sam Houston, who has a proven coach, but also players who have played at the FBS level coming in as transfers, how does that kind of give, maybe not give them an advantage, but it does make it a little bit more challenging because you know what the level of competition is. Today. Whoever you play. These guys win. They used to win it and playing. I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me if they played at the FBF, SCS. I mean, it doesn't matter. Those guys are really good players who expect to win and know how to prepare and know how to compete. And that's what you look at. I mean, sometimes we put too much stuff. Hey, there's a lot of guys in the NFL that went to FCS schools. And playing great football and some of the best that ever played. So, I mean, that, that has nothing to do if you've been an FBS player or an FCS player. You look at their talent on the field and where they go and what they do and the program they're in, the culture they're in, and what they play with. So, I mean, in that regard, they are an excellent football team that are coached very well, and we're going to have to play one extra football game. And then in terms of third down offense this past year, you know, back in 2020, you were one of the best on converting we were on third down. second in the country. How, last have year you, we were, how have you seen the offense take those strides, especially with the well, I think decision-making and the health of – Offensive linemen, the health of quarterbacks, the health of receivers, the health of all those things. And we've executed pretty well in the scrimmages and in the day-to-day -day basis in which we have to do. So, I mean, we've always usually been a pretty good third down team where we've been and uh, we able to throw the football. But sometimes you don't have as good a year as you do others. Coach, back behind the lights to the left, Tyler, and then we'll stay in the back to Justin. I guess what aspect or, or unit are you the most confident in after fall camp and you know, as you start the season? <laughs> and you, what, what are you going to be I'm looking most for confident in all of them, and, and, I, and I'm worried about all of them. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I joke about that, but there is no way to answer that question. There is, I mean, there's no, you say what, 
because you say it, well, that, that group should be more experienced when they go out. Well, they don't play as well. That, that group over there plays well. I mean, you know, it's the one that the ones that I feel the most confident in are the ones that practice the best, and the ones I feel the least confident in are the ones that don't practice the best. I mean, I, and I don't, you know, you're on guys on a weekly basis, and I'm, I'm joking about it, but it, I, I wish I knew <laughs> consistently because as a coach, you're always – this can happen, that can happen, this can happen. I feel confident in all of our guys, and I don't feel very unconfident in any of them. I think we have a very good team that has a chance to play very well. We just have to prepare well, practice well, so we can play well. To the back right, Justin. Coach, I know you go through situations and practice and all that, but how anxious are you to see it translate in a game situation on Saturday, like complimentary football, re responding to adversity? I mean, how all big those is that? I, I'm, ang I'm very anxious because you never get a true – gauge of that and it doesn't matter I mean till the numbers on the scoreboard have lights on them <laughs> and those numbers matter that's when guys you know it's it's you you want to see how they react and do it. and like I say there'll be some it may bother some it may enhance I mean that's always the way it is I mean until they get used to it or whatever or, or they may all do it from the get-go get I mean I've had it go in every way possible you coach as many years as I have but you love to see the first days when they're out there and the excitement in their eyes and to go compete and play for Texas A&M and you know fulfill a lifetime dream of what they're having to do to the left, Rob, then down front. Howdy, Coach. Um, you told us in the past that the team kind of tells you who's going to get, who's going to be the starting quarterback. Um, at what point did you know that the that the team had chosen King as the guy that? I don't is, say is they chose. I mean, that's part uh, that's part of the decision. They don't make the whole decision. That's part of the decision and what you're doing. And I and I say this. They told me Max could be too. They told me Connor could be too. That guy's got time with the ones. Those guys move the ball straight down the field. Now that sounds contradicting. But that's a fact. They love, all three guys our team responds to. I mean, our, our, our response to, they play well around. They block for them. They make catches for them. They make checks for them. They play hard. I mean, vice versa. I mean, and all three guys, all three guys have, have done that. And uh, so it's just part of a matter of information we had to get together, make a choice. Down front, Brent. You said sometimes you don't have as good as years as others. Uh, last year you weren't as good on offense as you were the year prior. What gives you confidence that you'll be – Practice, you know, experience, and things we do. Sure. I know I know the system we have is a very good system. It's been proven for a long period of time. I think our players are executing it very well right now. And I think we're healthy. And a lot of the guys, we haven't had a, uh, a lot of guys that, uh, you know, you, you get trying to get ready and all of a sudden get injured and you have to put other guys in or less experienced and things that go on. So I think from a practice standpoint, now, I always feel confident in our guys. we got to go out there and play. So we'll sign, find out. It's time to quit worrying about all that stuff and go play. Front left, Naomi, and then front right, Cole. What are some goals or things that you want to see on both sides of the ball this weekend? No self-inflicted wounds, pre-snap penalties, alignments, assignments, techniques, be in the right place. I mean, people say that be your alignment. You're not your if you're a foot inside the guy or a foot outside the guy. Line up the right way. All you, allow yourself the intangibles. Play with great toughness. Play with great effort. Play with great discipline. Have a lot of pride in what you do and have grit in what you do. And play with three eyes. Play with immediacy, intensity, and intelligence. And that's the thing. If you play with those things, you take care of your business, and the scoreboard says what you wanted to say. Front right, Cole, and then to the left, Cease. Jimbo, you talked about injuries, you know, being healthy for the start of the year. Is there anybody that may not be able to play week one? Mm, not as I know of right now. To the left, Cease. So do you have a number two quarterback, Jimbo? Yes. I mean, I feel right now, maybe right now we're in uh, Haynes, Max, and Connor. But at the same time, I think either one of those other two guys could go in a, in a second, and that can be dependent on how you practice each day. And it could be Payne goes out there and had a terrible week of practice. Hey, hey, you know, whatever. I mean, guys, that thing is ever changing. And that you don't care about receiver. <laughs> I care about them all too. You don't care about DB. Uh, <laughs> no, I Joe. I mean, but hey, they got to go practice well and play well. And and I feel very confident with all three of those guys. Any thoughts on Desmond Howard picking you guys to win the national championship? I didn't hear that. So that's great for Desmond. I mean, I appreciate confidence. <laughs> I didn't know that happened. We'll go to the back right, Justin to the back left. Desmond's good. I was like Tyler. <laughs> no, I did. Desmond's a good guy. Him, all that whole crew is a good group. They do a great job for college football. Go ahead, Justin. Coach, I know we focus a lot on young guys at receiver, but Chase Lane, man, just kind of a consistent guy for you outside. Just what, what's Chase bring to that room? And yeah, the guy's been playing a lot of games, made plays, very consistent, very smart, very intelligent guy. Uh, very well-rounded guy, can play different multiple positions, has played all three positions at receiver, which is makes him even that much more valuable. So, you know, hoping a guy that has a great, great year, and uh, we counting on him with the experience and the time he's had on the field. He's had a good camp. Back behind the lights, Tyler, you'll wrap us up. 
Jim, were there any more, I guess, nerves or butterflies in the stomach for a season opener? And, and how excited are you for some of these freshmen to run out on the Kyle Field for the There's first always season? butterflies for a season. There's butterflies for every game. I mean, that's that's what makes it – that means you care. Butterflies mean you care. And then you, how you handle them, you go play. And it, what you're doing is relevant to yourself as much as anything. Everybody talks about everybody else. It is relevant. But how relevant is to you? I mean, as a player, as a coach, as – makes what you do and how, how hard you prepare and the things you put into it. It's a lifetime of work. It's a lifetime of dreams for them. So I love it every year. I mean, to me, that's one of the most exciting times to watch them evolve into the team and the players individually and collectively that they can become. And that's one of the great joys to me as a coach and what you can have in watching that happen. And so I'm, I'm very excited for that. All right, Coach. Appreciate the time. Thank you.